This is Barry and Eric again. Uh, we've got a firearms facts tonight. We're going to talk about some unusual things that have happened over time uh, that I read about years ago, and uh, maybe we can prove it one day about a full auto single action revolver. But before we do that, we'll get into uh, what is plus P ammunition. That is ammunition that is loaded hotter than normal. Now, if your gun is rated for plus P, it will say so on the side of the barrel. This is an old Smith uh, Model 36-7. This gun is not rated for plus P. All the new Smiths are, and it will say plus P right here on the side of the barrel. Now, it won't hurt to shoot a limited supply of plus P's in this gun. What will happen if you fire it in a gun not rated for it? Well, it just wears the gun out. You're gonna get about a 10% increase in velocity, a 15% increase in recoil, and you're wearing your gun out. It's not necessary. A lot of cop buddies of mine carry these for backup, and they practice with standard velocity, but when they go out on the street, they load it with these plus P's. They figure, hell, five or six shots, you know, who cares? But they, uh, they load it that way, and that's the way that old timers used to do it. But I don't recommend that. They make plenty of these loads that are non-plus P, that are almost as effective, and you can probably shoot them uh, more accurately like we talked before. When you hot rod something, you're losing accuracy, or uh, you may be losing uh, uh, controllability of your gun. It's better to shoot what this gun is designed for in this gun. Now this gun is a shorter arms, very unusual. It's a left-handed revolver. It's called a southpaw. This gun weighs about 16 and a half ounces. It has an alloy frame, stainless cylinder and barrel. It has a plastic grip frame. That's why this gun is so light. This gun, if you fire this round in it, the Remington Plus P 125 grain, you will stretch this frame of this gun. What happens when you fire rounds of Plus P in your gun, it stretches the frame. The gun will not blow up, but it stretches the frame, and sooner or later, like this old wore out Smith here, you get a lot of end play. There's probably 25,000 of end play. Now when that happens, the rounds are way down here, the firing pin may not hit them hard enough to fire them. You shoot it like that, it will, because the rounds are against the firing pin. This gun is in 100% worn out condition. Totally, this gun is completely worn out. But that's what happens when you fire plus P. You start getting that end shape. Now, you might fire 50 rounds of this, and hey, my gun is still tight. You might fire 100 rounds, you might start feeling a little bit of end play, but once this cylinder starts moving, it batters itself very quickly. Once you get the movement in here, the gun starts battering itself and you will wear it out real quick after about, it took me 150 rounds of this to stretch a charter arms to the point it would not fire anymore. So, you're just wearing your gun out for no reason. Now here's an old hand ejector, Smith. That is, this gun was made in 1942, it is in mint condition. Chambers are bright, it's got a little surface rust on This gun right here, it's tight. We're going to show you some B-roll in a minute of how, how to check these revolvers again. This is a fine example of an old Smith. Now, you might ask how a single action can fire fully automatic. Okay? A gun rider years ago bought a, uh, he bought a uh, Colt revolver, single action army. He loaded it up. There's a firing pin bushing on, on the uh, recoil shield. The firing pin bushing was missing. So there was a hole about that big around that the firing pin was going through. And when he, when he fired the gun, it fired and it blew the primer out of the case, blowing the hammer back. It kept doing that till it ran out of ammunition. And it does it in a split second. Uh, the late, great Bob Munden, he would take a gun like this and fire, two, three, and he could do it so fast it sounded like one. So people say, well, why didn't the guy let go of it when it started shooting? He can't, he couldn't. The gun emptied itself in a split second. But that's what happened. The firing pin bushing was missing. We're gonna show you, when I take this cylinder out in a minute, we're gonna show you the firing pin bushing. The later Rugers, they're made out of much stronger material, so they don't have to have a separate bushing in there. The bushing is hard. The old guns were made of iron and the primer eventually would, would, would set back and dig a hole in there. 
So they put a hardened uh, firing pin bushing in there. But that's how the gun went full auto. Uh, I couldn't believe the story when I heard about it and read about it, but it makes sense. Once you see what, what happened there, and I'm, we're gonna show you some B-roll in a minute of how that happened. And I wish we had an old single action to try that with. Don't you, Eric? Oh yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. Put this thing in a in, in remote fire. Oh yeah. Yeah, no doubt. We may one day do that. But uh, right now, uh, those are the gun facts for this evening. And uh, but remember, folks, don't don't uh, don't hot rod your guns. This this is too good of a gun to, to ruin like that. You're just hot rodding something that's not meant to be. So just don't do it. Load, if you need a power more powerful round than a 38, get a 357 Magnum, and then you can shoot both. So uh, we're going to wrap it up for this evening, and uh, y'all be getting some close-ups of the guns, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and that we'll be, see you next week.